caribou hunting, backcountry hunts, all right here with Rob Gates of Savage Firearms. Welcome into Gun Talk Hunt. Today's Gun Talk Hunt is brought to you by Pyramid Air, your number one resource for everything air gun. Hop on over to PyramidAir.com to check out all the goodies they got. We got a good episode today coming up. I mean, we're we've got the man from Savage Arms, <laughs> Rob Gates. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that, and I'm gonna let him give him a little bit of background on your 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 background. Sure, I guess sure. that's all we want to do, right? So just, I. Uh... I work with the sales and marketing team at Savage and uh, been in the business a long time. You know, this would have been a uh, 32nd SHOT Show, and uh, I'm not quite uh, 51 years old yet, so started young. So you started really young, and you said you started out uh, sweeping floors. Is that correct? Yeah, I was the uh, 13th <laughs> employee at Glock uh, in Smyrna and started sweeping floors there and just kind of Worked my way through college, and uh, the rest is history. But you and I have something very much in common, and and we have a passion for the outdoors, and we have a passion for hunting. Absolutely. And and that's that was one of the first things that you actually told me, and we were just talking, and you said, "Well, that's really why I do this." <laughs> what is that? Is that accurate? It it is. Yeah, of course you you got to enjoy what you do, and and. Uh, you know, there's, there's been some good times and some bad times through, through the many years in this business and, uh, the hunting part of it, uh, is just kind of a, a respite for me just yeah. allows me to step away. And, you know, I'm blessed to be able to sell and market and, and work with products that, uh, that I use and enjoy every day. Right. And we'll get, we'll, we'll get to Savage down the line, but, uh, but you actually brought up a hunt that really like i'm actually really jealous of you going on this hunt and in a few months you're heading up to alaska yeah so how did this come about and i mean where roughly <laughs> i know you're not going to give us gps coordinates uh but where roughly are you going what's the plan what's the goal yeah it's a caribou hunt and uh, we've got a customer that i'm taking up and uh and one of my sales reps and uh it's a rafting trip, so you fly into Fairbanks and then take a secondary, I guess it's a um, cub, you know, multi, yeah. multi-passenger transport plane for two hours, and then you land, and then you get on a one-on-one Piper no or kidding. something, and it's just you and the pilot, and, and then you go another See, hour. Up. like the further up you get, the smaller Small. the plane. <laughs> yes. That's when you know you're headed into the right area, I guess. Exactly. But... But caribou's on the plate, and caribou are one of those things that that I I think kind of gets a bad rap in the media. Um, they say numbers are down, numbers are down, and and they they do preach that. Oh yes, and that's not the case. No, I mean, no, no. I, I, the numbers that I've been seeing, um, especially up man, up where you're going, like the numbers are good. Good. And so you're gonna have to Solid. weed. You're gonna have to weed through a lot of caribou. You hope. You never know. <laughs> it's hunting. That's the goal. Like, <laughs> it's that's the goal. We'll and see. now roughly july august time frame yeah we uh we fly up end of july like the 28th 29th and have an extra day in in fairbanks and then catch catch the uh puddle jumpers they call them i guess and okay head north arctic circle man i'm i'm so jealous because they're going to be in grizzly country and that's like if i had to choose like so we always do this. I mean, I think you probably have a, a bucket list of animals oh, yes. that you sit there and you go, okay, these are these are my top three. Like mine has to be grizzly on top, a moose, and I probably would go a wolf. Like I re- I don't know why, but that that probably be my top three. Yeah, I, <clears throat> lucky I had the the moose a few years ago oh, up there in Alaska. See. So that that was number one for years. Really, the caribou sits. Th- sits at the top right now so uh, uh i've been again very very lucky and blessed to be in this business but uh red stag I mean, a european red stag okay re- a real one you didn't was, jump down to texas and do that you can you i can. mean i know yeah. you can but yeah i would yeah. much rather take it over yeah. somewhere where they are native native yeah <laughs> right so i shot 
shot a, a nice red stag in Spain one time. So what's that what's that hunting like? I mean, is it like our deer hunting over here? Or are you guys doing driven hunts? It, we've done a little bit of both. Okay. Over there, there's stand, there's spot and stalk, and then there's driven. Uh, so I've been uh, on a couple uh, boar hunts okay. in Germany that are driven hunts, which are completely uh, unique and different and, and just inspiring and and uh, what's the right adjective? You just stand there and go, wow, because there's bands. There's guys playing trumpets before oh. the hunt starts, <laughs> and they give speeches. And, you know, it's a really? big deal. Yeah. It's a really big deal. It takes, you know, three to four years in Germany for you to get your hunting license. Oh, wow. It's flora and fauna and studying scat, and you have to know all of that. to. And to, you have to take a test. Like, oh, I yes. mean, it's a, it's a test, and if you don't pass, you don't. Both written and, and shooting. And you in have the to show, show uh, that you can actually shoot and moving targets, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a from different what setup. I, from what I hear, I, I hear it's extensive. Yes. Like, I mean, so if you go over there in hopes to hunt and you don't pass it, that's country by country. I was able to right. get a German hunting license based on my U.S. and then I, it's been years ago. But they said uh, they said uh, you guys got a lot of guns. You're probably good. Is that kind of the feeling like I'm getting here? Like, something like, like that. Oh yeah. yeah. How many guns do you own? I guess they cap it. Like over if you there, own, you if know. you own over like ten guns in the U.S., then you're okay to hunt in Germany. Yeah. Something I don't know like if this. that's actually true, but that's what I'm going to throw out there and say, because that's what kind of what it seems like. Yeah, um, yeah. But the driven hunt, so they're actually, it's funny because you mentioned red, red deer and I was watching, I was, you know, doing the mindless scrolling of the Instagram and I stopped on this video because I was like, oh my gosh, that guy's going to get run over by a red deer. Like, and there was like four or five of them coming right at him. And these oh, yeah. are not small critters. No, they're, they're not quite as big as a full grown elk, uh, but they're, they're, but they can run. Oh yeah. And they, yeah. And then you get in the roar, the rut when uh -huh. they're screaming and hollering. and it's, it's pretty unique. Really? Yeah. What well, would you liken it to like a elk rut? Oh yes. I mean, that's yeah. very much how they, much. they operate. They're moving yep. their satellite, I guess, bucks. Yes, and, absolutely. Yeah. Same. So same it's, setup. so it's like a blend of, elk and i guess whitetail or i mean Probably mule deer and whitetail really? is kind of where we hunted in, in spain with that type of environment some scrub and you know mesquite type yeah junipers. do they go do they go over like by score or they just say oh that's a good one like how do how do you feel judge that because i'd <laughs> i'd be totally lost i'd be looking at it at like elk i'd be looking at it much right. like i do an elk yeah they do it by weight or actual weight of the um, the rack, huh? Rack now, yeah, points, but it's uh, it's pretty cool to 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 be like the tradition, right? You know, to see it and, did and you, be a part of that. Did you have to wear like a red coat and white pants <laughs> and like the tall black boots and hounds and everything? Some some, <laughs> some do, and then some just go over with you know their real tree or mossy yep. oak or whatever they got. You know, that'd be my preferred deal. Yeah, just go over regular camo. Yeah. Or, or red plaid, red plaid, a lot that. of green, a lot of green tones, okay. you know, especially on the driven hunts in Germany. It's a lot of just plain green. So you did a, so you said you did a little of each, yes. right? Yep. Which was your favorite? There's not much better than a, a driven hunt in, in Germany for, for boar and fox and, and uh roe deer. So it's, really? it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Man. Yeah. So what was so what was getting the guns over there like? It's not easy. It's not impossible. Lucky that you know we're, we'll go and our German distributor will be okay. a part of this event or this hunt, and so they'll they'll have guns for us, and and that way we don't have to worry about transporting okay. so much. Because usually, typically, a lot of times when you go overseas like that, there's a company that kind of handles all your paperwork. And I'm guessing it's somewhat similar. Yeah, it is. It's like going to Africa where you have to go to U.S. Customs and Border Patrol and you have a form to prove serial numbers and, right. uh, you know, get all that done before you go. So that you get, it's not necessarily to get it out. It's to get it back. Right. Without paying taxes. Just as long as yeah. you come back with what you took. Went with. Yes, exactly. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning that the, I travel to hunt, but, yeah, I mean, and you – 
this is a fellow Oklahoma guy here I'm talking yeah. to. So, so he's got some experience there, but that was typical hunting for me. Was it, you know, Oklahoma and I didn't travel a whole lot. Um, then I started going to Canada and I kind of got addicted to that. Um, and then it was, um, kind of the DIY thing. And that's kind of the, where I'm at right now in my hunter's journey is I'd rather like kind of challenge myself against the elements and against, you know, my knowledge of a limited area. Sure. Um, and you've done quite a bit of that. I have, I've, uh, I've done a little bit of both where you've, you know, you've got experienced outfitters and, and then some DIY stuff. And, uh, it's, it's interesting. I have not done, like we talked about Alaska, I've not yeah. done that, but I've had friends that have gone up and, and DIY for caribou mm -hmm. get dropped off. Plane's going to be back in a week and it's you and your buddy and a satellite phone maybe. And, uh, I have yet to hear of a successful hunt in the, in that and type of scenario. I'm yeah. sure it happens. It's just for me, I haven't, I've heard a lot of horror stories, <laughs> right? Which would make you obviously it'd make you, let's just say a little gun shy about, about pulling that trigger and g committing. Cause that's a, that's a, a monetary commitment on that. Oh yes. I mean, it's, it's pricey. Yeah, it I mean, is. You're going to pay a little bit for it, but you know what you get out of it. And I think having local knowledge, I think is, is key to that success. Today's Gun Talk Hunt is also sponsored by ATN, the future of optics. Smart HD technology is at the heart of ATN optics. HD video recordings, wireless streaming, ballistic calculations, image stabilizations, laser range finding, and much, much more. Now standard on most ATN optical systems. You know, it's, I mean, we got to, we got to get some of these in. Like I'm, I love using them. I've, I've been a fan of them. The Thor 4, I love it. Thor LT, Excite 4K, all of them great stuff. And even the Excite LTV. Find out more at atncorp.com. But even some of the guys that I know have gone on these, you know, D a DIY caribou hunt, they had local knowledge. Yeah. They were, call this guy, you know, go to this area. You're going to go up this drainage. And I think when you start playing it out like that, it's like, how does a how does a guy get started with it when he has no local knowledge? Because we you and I are at a like a huge advantage. Oh yes, absolutely. Because we know guys throughout the industry who have if made you don't know, mistakes. you know somebody that does know. Exactly. Yeah, and it's it's almost, you know, I hate to say it, but it's almost, you know, jump in and go try it and maybe you're successful and then then you know. Then you're right. the one with that knowledge and in year two or year three you go back and the comfort level is going to be a much, you know, a very different situation. Oh, hundred percent. I remember my first trip to, to, I, I remember my first trip to Canada. I can remember everything I packed. And then I remember my first drive, which was, it was only about a, I don't know, a 14 hour drive or so up to do a do it yourself antelope hunt. Oh yeah. I hauled a trailer <laughs> to hunt antelope. Right. Hey, and that you do not need that at all. Yeah. And you know that. Oh yeah. I mean, like that's overpacking. Was that your first? That was, that was that my was first. first. And that's, that you goes. You learned to, just like a DIY caribou yeah. hunt in Alaska. You're going to learn that first year. Yeah. But I, and it always cracks me up thinking about that is because I mean the, the little boxed in trailer, you know, one of those pull behinds, it was packed full. I mean, just everything you could imagine. And I think on my last trip, I packed like a backpack <laughs> and my gun case. Yeah. And that was it. That was it. I mean, Extra so, cha change of underwear and socks yeah. and, and you're good. And you don't really don't need much after yeah. that. And, and I think, I think part of the mystery of, you know, these do it yourselfers and the backcountry guys, which the backcountry hunts now are becoming more and more prevalent. More guys are seeking out this adventure, but you need to go with someone knowledgeable. Yeah, not necessarily an outfitter either. You no. know, I'm not saying that's the way to go. I'm just saying, you know, find a buddy that that's had that one year experience and and gone through the tribulations of, you know, what do you need because right. it can be it can be intense. And so I've been putting in for Colorado and trying to do some more backcountry hunts and it's archery and thank goodness I've got local knowledge. Like and 
if I didn't, man, I don't know where I'd be. Yeah. Like I would be lost. I would be searching the, the YouTube. I would, I would be looking at that like, okay, what do I need to pack? And, and leaning on resources, sure, you know, leaning on like the outdoor lives and the field and streams. Well, and think stuff of like the that. resources that are available today ver- versus just you know, a 10, map. Uh, ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a map or twenty five years ago. Yeah. You know, you had nothing. You just kind of went yeah. and and uh, the difference that you know the uh, the benefits of of having technology and GPSs and things like that. Oh I can't gosh. think of Fred Bear back in the day. Yeah. Just get, yeah, I'll be back in ten days. And I'm going. You, you won't hear from him. No. And, and that's funny. You bring up technology because I remember, and I'm, I don't know about you, Rob, but I am slowly becoming one of those parents that goes, well, back in my day, I'm like, and I find myself doing this. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're turning into your father. Oh yeah. Because I go like, well, I remember when I had to print off the, the, uh, uh, map quest. I had to print off the map quest, and if I had to make one wrong turn, the map quest is completely screwed up. I can't imagine doing that going into, like, the back country of Colorado. Right. Like, I couldn't imagine that. Like, I'm sitting here with a paper map, which yeah. is is a lost art. Oh, yes, absolutely. You, you hand your kid a map and say, go to the, you know, to this intersection. <laughs> That's what I ought to like start doing is printing off map quests and just hand it to my son and say, here, go to the grocery store for me. <laughs> Like here, live like I did. Yep. Yep. Oh, can you remember traveling with you know the big thick atlas and oh, pages absolutely. would get torn and yeah, that was uh, that's a lost art, I think. And and you would well, and we had talked about it. And I'm fixing to go to Alaska as well, but mine's more of a family vacation and a more of a touring and and I, I'm and my son comes in and asks me, he's like, "What are you doing?" And I've got the mile post book out. And I'm going, I'm planning out our trip. He's like, why? Why? Just pull up Google. I'm like, just let me do it my way, son. (laughs) Like, back off. (laughs) But it gets that way. Oh, yes. And you sit there and you get your yellow highlighter out and you're like, oh, yeah, this would be a great spot to to stop and fish. Exactly. You know, and then you kind of, then you, I will hone my area. So once I find it on the map, like I'll go in now and look over Google maps and stuff like that because man, what a tool. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then you, you have a stop where you're going to take the family. And so then you jump on Yelp and look for reviews and find the horror stories so that you don't. You oh yeah. Don't go time. there. Yeah. Yeah. Never go to that place. Like it's, <laughs> it's shady. Like don't definitely don't go there, but yeah, the backcountry hunts. I mean, we had talked about it beforehand that they're, they might not be for everyone. Absolutely. Um, I can, I can say, you know, back in my younger days, I try to think of myself as still young, but you know, I mentally counts. I, yeah. That counts. I, well, and I don't think I had the mental fortitude to, to do some of that stuff. And, and it's not for everybody. Some people, you know, they've got it and can jump in and, and it's more about the adventure than, right. than anything else. So I think you think long and hard about it. Make sure that it's it's what you what you want, what you can handle. Yeah, you know? and I think I think that's a good way to put it. I think a lot of guys are kind of enamored. I think they're a little bit enamored with the mystery of it, and I think they're enamored a lot with the gear. Yeah, because honestly, the gear that that we have these days is is unmatched it over is. time. Well, my checklist for my my upcoming hunt up there is just crazy. I'm looking at it, and you know, you get fifty pounds. Oh yeah, That's, and you better make it count. You got to make it count, and so talking about technology and and you know multiple use items, you know this towelette could be a pillow or it could be a oh, shower. Yeah. You know, man. So you're having to. So the checklist you're going through now. Have you put your pack together? No, it's laid out in my office. I still got a couple months. Okay, but but it's already laid oh, it out. Is, it is hiking sticks to bug spray yeah. to. So how, how soon are you going to put it all together and go, okay, this can go, that can stay. I've, I will never use that. I kind of have it in my head. I'm going to pack it, yeah. put it on the scale and then go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's 17 pounds <laughs> that have got to go somewhere. <laughs> I'm sitting at 70 pounds here. <laughs> yes. I got to get rid of 20. What's yeah. the first thing to go? Do you think? Knowing the, what what you have laid out, what's the mo- one piece of questionable gear in there that you're like, 
it's technology. It's yep. battery, probably battery chargers. Yep. You know, just for cameras and GoPros yeah. and, and things like that. And, you know, I've, I've got a little solar panel charger yeah. thing that like I, a goal zero, yep. you know, exactly. Perf. Those, those are great to have. I, I, yeah, they are. And, you know, uh, it's little things weigh a lot when they add up. Oh, and yeah. so you start to, there's nothing, you go through the list and you're like, there's nothing here besides the rifle and ammo that weighs a, weighs a, a lot. But, uh, and you find the lighter the gear, the more expensive oh, the gear. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just a, just a heads up. Oh, if yes. you're out there and you're looking, you're like, man, this one weighs like, like 17 ounces less. Yeah, it's going to come with a bigger price tag, too. <laughs> yes. And then you have your list, and you start adding up those ounces, and then you have to go to Google to figure out how many pounds that weighs. <laughs> <laughs> See, what would we do without technology exactly. and, and what to do? And so I have to ask, what gun are you taking? I am going to take a Savage Impulse, our new straight pull yep. that we just launched a couple months ago. And uh, uh take that up and which those are pretty light anyway so i mean it's not no overly heavy so yeah you're saving weight there a little so bit. i'm actually going to take two i'm going to take a 110 ultralight okay and that'll be the caribou gun you know and um and then going to take a 300 wind mag for grizzly just in case just in yeah. case yeah yeah that's well, always nice to have a backup but you know we've shot the impulse and and i've been really impressed with the speed it is very, that gun. very uh, quick. And that's yeah. one reason I'm thinking that's the grizzly gun. And, you know, we're going to hunt two on one. So, you know, I have a customer okay. with me and, and one will be hunting caribou and one will carry the grizzly, grizzly. gun and then, you know, we'll switch it up. So, so you're only taking, so, and that's, this is a good point. Um, and, and I, as long as we're going down the same path, you're taking two guns for two guys, but you know, you'll each have a gun, but he's not going to bring something else. Right. Right. There's actually going to be three of us and we're going to take four guns. See, that's all, that's just really all you need. Yeah. Just, to, just to have that backup. And, and if you're going into a backcountry hunt with someone else, think about that Absolutely. when you're heading in, when you're thinking about your packing, like what, what can he carry that I don't need? Right. You know, and, or is he bringing extra and all that good stuff? And, and with the, like the 110 ultralight, having that, you know, six, seven pound gun with an optic mounted to be able to, all right, you're going to go up over this, this range into this valley from the, from the river raft or the raft that's, you know, you took to the area, having a couple pound lighter gun makes a difference. Oh, a hundred percent, especially stuff you're going to be probably hiking through. Yes. The, the moss and the tundra, yeah. and the, they call it squishy. Oh, that doesn't, so what boots are you wearing? I just have to ask, just because I'm interested. I have a, a pair of Kenetrex that I'm gonna wear. Up Already first. broken in, right? They're right. in the process. Come on, okay. uh, they're, they're in the process. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to lose some weight and hiking and walking, and I do have a pack that's weighted yeah. that I'm that wearing the boots. So so yeah. you're all you, so you're preparing now. Oh yes. Yeah. See, another thing guys don't do is prepare physically. Yes. They can get themselves mentally ready, just thinking, okay. They've got their checklist. They know what they need to do, but taking care of the body is a more important thing. Oh, yeah, and I, I started uh, back in January knowing that this hunt was coming up, and it was, for me personally, it was a perfect, I needed a reason. I was I was overweight. Not, not where you not, wanted, not to, wanted be. to be. Where I wanted to yeah. be, and so this hunt was was that carrot, and uh, uh, it has, uh, knock on wood, is it, I'm, I'm and working now, hard. And, now all he gets to do is eat carrots. right. That's about exactly. it. I mean, come on. <laughs> like, it's just, I don't know. It's it's interesting. And, and you guys are going to base out of a spike camp? Yeah. Or you'll camp, so you'll float. We'll have a spike camp the and then float and find them and then hunt them. Oh, my gosh. That sounds, I like, sounds so addictive. Like, I could see how hunting like that, like from a raft, because you're seeing so much different country. Country. Yeah, you can travel. And, and it's guided. It is. It is. That, it's two on one. One guide, two hunters. I think that's the way to do it. it at right. least your first time, you know. I, I don't. I don't know if I. Like I said, I don't know if I have the mental fortitude to to jump in and just have it do a drop off hunt. I'm man. I mean, if you, I think a lot of that comes down to who you're hunting with. Yes. Right, because you've got to have that guy who is when you're down, when you're out, when you're like, I can't, I can't move another muscle. He's like, Hey, get your ass up and let's, let's go. Let's go. 
Like, yeah. I mean, that's important. Absolutely, because it, you know, the physical aspects of it can can drive you to a place where I'm just, you know, I'm just going to stay in the tent today. Yeah. And the, he, the water, the rain up there is is another thing that, you know, I have Ziploc baggies on my my checklist just yeah. for socks and just to yeah. keep, you know, dry bags. And, and I've heard that. I've heard that, you know, you'll get a squall coming through and it's, you know, a day and a half of rain yeah. and constant. And it's the wind. air is so moist that even if you hang up your wet socks to dry, you know, on inside your tent, Unless you have a fire to dry dry them over, they're they're not going to dry. Oh, uh, and wet feet oh. ruin a hunt. Ru- absolutely ruins a hunt. Ruins my day and ends up that just ruined my whole entire mood. Oh yes. So, yep. well, Rob, thank you so much for joining. Uh, and man, good luck on the hunt. Yes. Let us know how it goes. I like, will. So when you get done, I want to hear about it. So. This is an open invite. Once you're done, I want you back on the show, and we're going to tell these people how it went, and you're going to tell this epic, long story about you conquering the caribou. Absolutely. All Sounds right. good. Thanks, guys. As always, keep those muzzles pointed in the right direction and always be safe. Thanks for listening and watching to Gun Talk Hunt. Gun Talk Hunt.